Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come see our journey today. We are at Forest Lawn in Glendale, California. Uh, we're, we're at the train depot because of the train. <laughs> no, you heard the train in the echo. Oh, I see. Woo, woo. <laughs> woo. Let's go. That's Glendale behind us. Here. Subscribe, comments, and a thumbs up are always welcome on this channel. Using downtown Los Angeles as a reference point, we will head slightly northeast, about 16 minutes, to the Glendale, California Forest Lawn Cemetery, where we will find the graves of Walt Disney, Jimmy Stewart, along with about 15 other celebrities. There are 250,000 graves in this cemetery, with many of them being celebrities. Glendale Forest Lawn is located at 1712 South Glendale Avenue in Glendale, California. It's a 300 acre cemetery and it's open from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. daily. Park on the side under a tree and be a lot of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. I'm bad. Did you hear him? I'm bad. But it's so good. It's all of Glendale. Pretty cool. On a cool, on a cl clear day, you would be able to see a lot more. See, so yeah, it's got to be Brand Boulevard because that's. All the car dealerships. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. These wonderful statues are all over the cemetery. This one says a place where teachers bring them to see the things they read of in books, where little churches invite knowledge that from their pulpits only words of love are spoken. Walter Elias Disney died on December the 15th, 1966. He needs no introduction as he was an American animator, film producer, and an entrepreneur. He is buried here with Lillian Bonds Disney. In 1966, he was diagnosed with lung cancer, and he died on December the 15th, 1966. Looks like somebody needs to take care of the garden. I think you need to get the Disneyland gardeners over here. Lillian Bonds Disney suffered a stroke on December the 15th, 1997, which was exactly 31 years after the death of Walt. Somebody actually broke the lock. I mean, really? Respect, respect people. Oh. All it says is Tracy, and Tracy is hard to see. Spencer Tracy was an American actor. He was known for his natural performing style and versatility. Tracy was the first actor to win two consecutive Academy Awards for Best Acting. Tracy's adult life of alcoholism, smoking cigarettes, taking pills, and being overweight left him in poor health by the time he reached his 60s. He died from a heart attack. That's the third voice of Mickey Mouse, and you can tell by the MM3 in the corner. The next grave we visited was that of Wayne Anthony Allwine, the third person to voice Mickey Mouse. On his grave, you'll even see the MM3 in the corner. He was notably married to Russie Taylor, who voiced Minnie Mouse, and you'll find an MMF in the corner of her grave. It's fun to know that Mickey and Minnie were really married. Taylor also did voices for The Simpsons, several different characters in 193 episodes. And it's right in sight of Walt Disney. Then we visited the niche of Larry Fine. Zoinks! <laughs> He's best known for his comedy act in The Three Stooges. There you go, the whole fine family. In 1970, Larry Fine suffered a debilitating stroke. He spent the last years of his life in a wheelchair and suffered several additional strokes 
Before his death on January the 24th, 1975, he was age 72 at the time of his death. That's the Three Stooges. The whole fine, high, fine family is there. That's a fine mess there. Isn't it? Chico Marx died October the 11th, 1961. He was an American comedian, actor, and a pianist. He was the oldest of the Marx brothers. His persona in the act was that of a charming, uneducated, but crafty con artist. Chico died of arteriosclerosis at age 74 on October the 11th, 1961 at his Hollywood home. His brothers had kept him on an allowance because of his terrible gambling habit. Alan Ladd was an actor and a film producer. He died of an accidental combination of alcohol, a barbiturate, and two tranquilizers in January 1964. This is Alan Ladd. This is Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole was an American singer, jazz pianist, and an actor. To this day, you'll hear him every year singing the Christmas song. Nat King Cole died of lung cancer. Cole was a heavy cigarette smoker, and when they discovered the cancer, they only gave him months to live. Gracie and George, together again. Yeah, that's the greatest right there. It is. After Gracie Allen died, George Burns would go and visit Gracie every month and tell her what was happening in the business. If you figure it out, that's over 41 visits to her grave. But he had to let her know what he was up to and what was going on in life. George Burns remained in good health for most of his life, in part thanks to daily exercise regimen of swimming, walks, sit-ups, and push-ups. He bought a new Cadillac every year and drove until he was 93. After that, Burns had chauffeurs drive him around. In his later years, he also had difficulty reading the fine print. Do it again. George and Gracie together again. Greatest of all time couple. Love followed them even into the afterlife. Al Simon was a production manager and a producer. He made the shows like Mr. Ed and the Beverly Hillbillies. Bob Baker was a famous puppeteer and was famous for the Bob Baker Marionette Theater. For me, he's even more famous for being the hardest grave in the world to find. He passed away in 2014 at the age of 90. Then we visited the grave of Jack Oakey. He was an American actor, starring mostly in films, but also working on stage, radio, and television. He portrayed Napolini in Chaplin's The Great Dictator in 1940, receiving a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Act. He was also well known for refusing to wear screen makeup of any kind. Oakey's second marriage was in 1950 to actress Victoria Horn with whom he lived at the Oak Ridge Estate in Northridge, California, until his death in 1978. The home he lived in was previously owned by Barbara Stanwyck. Be sure to watch a video that we have on our channel about the park behind it. Jack Oakey died on January the 23rd, 1978, at the age of 74 from an aortic aneurysm. Alan Hale Sr. was an actor and a director. He is best remembered for his character roles, in particular as a frequent sidekick, as well as films supporting Lon Chaney, Wallace Berry, Douglas Fairbanks, James Cagney, Clark Gable, and Cary Grant. He was the father of Alan Hale Jr., best known as the skipper in Gilligan's Island's television series. And we visited the grave of Tom Mix. He was the star of many early Western films between 1909 and 1935. He appeared in 291 films. He was Hollywood's first Western star. Mix died in a car crash on Highway 80 near Phoenix. About 18 miles south of Florence, Mix came upon construction barriers at a bridge washed away by a flash flood. Unable to stop in time, his car swerved twice, then overturned in a gully. 
Valley, a large aluminum suitcase containing money and traveler's check and jewels situated on the package shelf behind his head, hurled forward and fatally struck him, breaking his neck. Yeah. He's even got a bunny. Yeah, because he was Harvey. Harvey the rabbit. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart's an American actor and a military pilot. <laughs> that was one of my favorite movies. For he shall give his charge, his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. 1997, huh? July the 2nd, 1997. Stewart died of a heart attack caused by an embolism at the age of 89. Every year at Christmas, we watch him in It's a Wonderful Life on TV to this day. His character, George Bailey, reminds us of the people we should always try to be good and caring of all. Stuart. Who died first? And his other half, Gloria, who died three years before him. If you enjoyed our vlog, please subscribe. Ring that notification bell. And give us a like. It lets us know you care. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. And now it's time for us to fly.